Alrighty guys, so today I wanted to start off by recapping our GDP from yesterday. Alright, uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this multiple choice question. So which of the following would be subtracted when calculating GDP? Alright, government spending, or uh, export spending, import spending, or investment by businesses. So first off, the easiest way to think about this is to think about, alright, what helps our economy grow and what slows down our economy. Alright, so if we think back to our equation for GDP, all right, uh, we can look at, first off, government spending and business uh, investments. So the government spending would be the G in our equation, and the business investments would be the I, uh, and consumer spending would be the last big one, right? So consumer spending would be the money that we spend on shoes or clothes, things like that. Uh, government spending would be the roads or the cars or the bridges, or roads or bridges, uh, schools, military. Business investments would be anything uh, bought for a business to make that business grow. So building uh, all of those new restaurants and the Sam's Club over there by the strike zone, all of that would be included in that category. So if we're looking at these two, the export and import spending. So one of them is going to help our economy, right? When we export uh, goods, we produce the goods and we send them to other countries. That helps our economy grow because we get the money. But when we import goods, like whenever we buy uh, you know, like Sony goods from China or iPhones from China. All right, we're sending them the money, we're getting the goods, all right, and so that adds on to their GDP, but it takes away from ours. So over the past, you know, 10 or 15 years, we've had a negative trade balance with China, which means we import a lot more than we export to them. We export them a lot of food, but those computer goods, those technical goods that we buy from them are a lot more valuable. And so because of that, uh, we have a negative trade balance. We import a lot more than we export, and so that takes away from our GDP. It slows down our economy because we're not making these goods anymore. Sorry, I misplaced my clicker. That doesn't work anyway. All right, so I want you to go ahead and copy down this chart. All right, so there's three big economic indicators that we're going to look at in this class. All right, so the first one we already looked at was our G uh, equation for GDP. We're adding up the consumer spending, the business investments, the government spending. If you see XN like that, that just means net exports or total exports. So our net exports for the past several years have been negative. We've imported a lot more than we've exported. And so because of that, that hurts our GDP every year. So if you look at our current trade practices, right, under the Trump administration, the goal has been to limit uh, our imports from other countries by putting extra taxes or tariffs on them and maximizing our exports. All right, so the goal there being to get higher net exports. All right, what we're going to look at today is what we call the consumer price index. All right, and it's just a measure of what we call like a market basket of goods every year. All right, and so uh, we'll look at a really easy way of looking at this in just a second, but again, inflation is just the cost of goods going up year after year. All right, and so finally, uh, what we'll look at on uh, Thursday is our unemployment rate, right? How we measure the, the amount of people unemployed in our economy, because it's not just about people that don't have jobs. It's also about people that don't have jobs but are actively looking for them. All right, and so if you need to pause this so you can have a second to copy this down, that's fine. But I'm going to go ahead and go on, uh, and you can just unpause it once you're done. I don't know why this is not working anymore. All right, so like I said, the main thing that we're going to look at today is inflation, or the cost of goods going up over time. All right, so this consumer price index, sorry, let me write something down just one moment. All right, so yeah, this consumer price index all right, is measuring the cost of goods going up over time. Uh, think of it this way. Let's say that you go to Walmart and you get like an $80 basket of groceries, right? You've got your lettuce, you've got your milk, you've got your orange juice, your toilet paper. Right, you get $80 worth of goods there. All right, let's say you keep that receipt and then next year you go back and get the exact same products. So you get the exact same milk and the same lettuce and the same orange juice. Well, chances are some of those goods, although maybe not all of them, got more expensive over the year. 
All right, and that's how we use this consumer price index. It's like that, but on a national level. We use thousands, tens of thousands of goods and track their prices over the years. So let's look at it another way. Let me make sure that you can see this on your screen real quick. Uh -huh. All right, so let's say that we're looking back in uh, 2010 when I was in high school, and let's say that we're looking at today. All right, so let's say that we're looking at the McDouble to start out with. All right, so back in my day, the McDouble was on the dollar menu. It was exactly a dollar. Now today, I think they're more like a dollar twenty-six or something like that. All right, if you were to go to Subway, all right, back in 2010, well, a foot-long sub there was five dollars. Had that little jingle, the five-dollar foot-long. All right, today. They don't really have any subs for five dollars anymore. Maybe like a basic ham and cheese one, but a normal sub, they're more like seven dollars. All right, and whenever I was at Brunswick High School, uh, a soda from the drink machine, and this is back when we had the real soda too, not just the diet stuff. All right, that was a dollar from our soda machine. All right, today it's like a dollar twenty-five or a dollar fifty now. All right, and so if we average together all three of these prices and average together all three of these prices. All right, we would see that over the past 10 years, we've experienced inflation. The average cost of goods have gone up over the past 10 years. All right, so with the consumer price index, we do that, but on a very, very large level. We do it with houses and cars and watches and you know, you know, sandwiches, whatever, on just normal consumer goods, and we're averaging together the prices of those over a period of time. So yeah, that consumer price index, we're taking, just imagine like a grocery, a grocery cart or a market basket. Uh, you're taking those same goods year after year and you're, you're averaging out the prices of them to see if inflation has occurred. Usually about 1 or 2% inflation is pretty normal. All right, so let's look at some pros and cons of inflation. All right, so first off, um, when inflation occurs, purchasing power goes down. So Teachers last year got their first raise in 10 years. It had been nine years before that since we had a raise. All right, and so our purchasing power, our ability to buy goods went down every year that we didn't get that raise, right? So if I'm making $50,000 in 2010 and $50,000 in 2019, well, now that that sub doesn't cost $5 anymore, now that that McDouble's $1.25, or now that that soda's $1.25, Right? I'm not able to buy as much as I could before. All right? And so when inflation occurs, the value of your money is going to decline over time. All right? uh, and so it might as well be like, um, it might as well be like getting a, a, a decrease in pay. Even though I, I would have made $50,000 every year, that $50,000 wouldn't be worth the same. All right? And so uh, you raise that same kind of issue whenever you put your money into a savings account. So a couple of years ago, I bought my nephew a savings bond for his baptism. It was for $100. Now, the reason that I didn't just put $100 in my savings account and give it to him 20 years from now is because that $100 would be worth a lot less then. All right? So uh, on the other side of things, with the savings bond that I gave him, it grows about 3% per year, whereas inflation usually grows by about 1% or 2% per year. So whenever he gets that, that savings bond in 20 years, it'll be worth $160. But at that point, a Subway sub's probably gonna cost $10. Or a soda from the drink machine's probably gonna cost $2. All right, and so as inflation occurs, the value of money goes down over time. A good way of looking at extreme examples of this is to look at Germany after World War II or to look at Zimbabwe, right? So the exchange rate of dollars to Zimbabwe dollars which they stopped using like just a couple of years ago, was one US dollar, I'll just do USD for US dollar, to 13 trillion Zimbabwe dollars. All right, so the Zimbabwe dollar, dollar is pretty much worthless. So imagine saving up your whole life. You've got a million dollars saved up in the bank, right? You, you, that's your retirement account, that's your nest egg. You're gonna live off that for the rest of your life. But all of a sudden you wake up and a loaf of bread costs you $300. Now granted, that's a really extreme example, but it's happened in places like Zimbabwe or Germany after World War II. So people ask me all the time, like if we're in you know, $20 trillion worth of debt, why don't we print out $20 trillion and just give that to the countries that we owe money to? 
Well, the reason for that is because that would lead to inflation, right? The cost of goods would skyrocket and everything would become really, really expensive. All right, I think that's it for now. Um, but yeah, so I want to uh, read a play that'll kind of help illustrate some of the different ways that inflation can occur. So if you go ahead and switch over to the Google Meets, uh, I want to read through that together. 